I think the, the COVID-19 pandemic has hugely impacted so much of our lives with many people now facing redundancy and financial hardship. And this public health crisis it should prove now uh, more than ever that ending homelessness and rough sleeping should be a priority. Um, so I, I want to talk, I mean, obviously housing and homelessness is very much a devolved topic, but by virtue of our third party obligations in here, we're compelled to take part in the debates. But I, I do, I think it's been an interesting debate. And I want to offer just a few thoughts on what happens in Scotland, not, as, not by any means to say we're doing this better, because I think homelessness is a blight in all of us. Um, and I, I don't think that any of us would disagree that one person homeless is one too many. Um, but certainly in Scotland, the SNP has ensured that um, Scotland has some of the, the strongest homelessness rights in the world, which means that anyone who is experiencing or even at risk of homelessness is entitled to receive help from the local authority, including accommodation. The SNP is clear in the fact that a settled home is, is vitally important in supporting people to have a happy and healthy life. And that's why the Scottish Government are investing £32.5 million, which is more than half of its uh, £50 million ending homelessness together fund to support local authorities uh, to prioritise settled accommodation for all. And so in addition to, to more investment this year, the, the Scottish Government, along with the Convention of Scottish Local Authorities, published an, an updated ending homelessness together action plan. And one of the most significant recommendations in the action plan is the phasing out of night shelters. In, in Scotland, night shelters will be replaced with rehousing uh, welcome centres for people who would otherwise be sleeping rough this winter. The centres will provide emergency accommodation and people using the centres will be offered targeted support including for wellbeing, health and social care issues, legal rights, employment and welfare. So I think that will be life changing for people experiencing homelessness. We have also announced that £100 million package to, to, of further measures to alleviate the, the social harms caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, this included £5 million to help those at risk of homelessness uh, to find a settled home. In addition to the £100 million. Scotland's winter plan for social protection also includes £15 million of flexible funding for local authorities uh, in COVID-19 protection level 4, uh, which Glasgow has just been in, uh, which can be used to pay for food uh, and essentials. But it's also clear that, that UK Home Office policies are causing people to face destitution and homelessness over the winter months. Uh, myself and my party do remain very concerned that the Home Office plans to deport non-UK nationals who are sleeping rough. I think that is clearly a very inhumane and backwards policy. And I think these actions, I'm afraid, will, will undermine the UK government's commitment to end rough sleeping in England, uh, alongside undermining the, the vital work of devolved administrations uh, to help those most vulnerable during the pandemic. Now, uh, the, the issue of uh, no recourse to public funds uh, has come up the, the, this afternoon. And likewise, the, the SNP government has repeatedly called in the UK government to suspend uh, the, the no recourse to public funds policy, enabling people uh, to access public services and, and health advice uh, during the coronavirus pandemic. So the Scottish Government will, will continue to, ex to extend support to people with no recourse to public funds where possible, but I think it would be good to get action from the UK government on that as well. On the 16th of November, the Scottish Government announced a further £278,000 funding to six organisations supporting people subject to uh, NRPF. The grants will support projects like Ed in Edinburgh and Glasgow, which are helping people uh, subject to the, the, the UK government's policy, which imposes conditions on someone due to their immigration status uh, and restricts uh, access to welfare, housing and financial support. And I think we would all agree, Mrs Miller, that you know, coronavirus isn't something that, that respects people's immigration status. Uh, so I, I would leave the, the Minister to, to con reflect on that. However, despite the measures put in place uh, by the Scottish Government, th th this area of DWP policy is clearly reserved to Westminster. And I think that comes to the, the crux of the issue, because in until Scotland is an independent country, it is, I'm afraid, uh, an inescapable reality. That, yes, I'm very happy to give away. I thank the Honourable Member for giving way, and I'm, I'm sure he's coming on to it, but perhaps he could outline what the SNP government is doing to tackle drug deaths in Scotland, given the alarming figures we've seen for Scotland uh, are higher than average, and given the prevalence amongst the homeless community. He is absolutely right, and I'm a Glasgow MP, and the drug death figures in Scotland are totally and utterly unacceptable, and it's one of the reasons why I think more action does need to be done on that. I will not hide from that fact, but one of the things that would be very helpful, frankly, is if the UK government are unwilling to devolve uh, or take action on the 1971 Misuse of Drugs Act, then they should devolve that to the Scottish Parliament. There is a very, very difficult conversation that politicians, not just in Scotland, but right across the UK have got to have. And it is a brave thing for politicians to stand up and say, perhaps look at moving to safe consumption rooms, as they have done in many, many parts of the world. 
But if we want to tackle the drugs issues, which I think should be above party politics, then UK government ministers are going to have to come to the very difficult decision of going down the route of something like you see in Portugal, Australia and Germany. Um, but I think he's right to put that on record. And the drug death issue is something that I think has been forgotten about during the, this public health crisis. Um, so he's right to put that on the record. But the COVID-19 pandemic has proven to us all just how utterly tragic this government has been at handling a crisis. And with the possibility of a no-deal Brexit on the horizon, I dread to think how much more it could get for the poorest people in our society.